So I'm going to go over here to the mat context and I'm going to hit the tab key and type RS material builder like we do and throw that down. And this one, I'm going to call this vortex splines. And I'm going to just jump inside here. And I think that um, instead of the standard material, I'm just going to use the old RS material for this one. So we're going to throw it on. We're going to delete that and throw it on an RS material like so. And we'll just wire that in right here because I want to use the old translucency uh, model on it. So let's just uh, pop back up here to the top and under backlighting translucency, I'm just going to bring the weight up to about 0.5 and see what that does. Um, of course, I need to assign it to my material first, so or uh, to my object. So let's go back up to the object level. And here I'll go to the render tab and select my vortex splines material and hit accept. And that should update, or will it? Maybe I'll just uh, turn my render off and then turn it back on. Cool, and there we can see the material is uh, sort of taking hold now. Um, I think that what I'd like to do is just uh, increase the color a little bit. So I'm just gonna middle mouse drag on this to um, bring the brightness value up maybe to 0.8, something like that. And then um, I'm seeing, I'm noticing that there's some reflection stuff going on right here. I just want to kind of soften those out a little bit. So let's go down to the reflection roughness and um, let's bring that weight of the roughness up quite a bit. So something like 0.8, uh, let's say 0.9. And then what I wanted to do was actually start to use uh, those attributes to kind of drive some emission on these. Um, from our example project, we had done some sort of, uh, we had done these sort of illuminated spirals hidden inside of here. So let's go get that curve view attribute that we were just visualizing before. I'm going to throw down a particle attribute lookup or a point attribute, sorry, our point attribute, like so. And then we're gonna put in curve view. If you if you can't remember how it's spelled, you just kind of dive in here, middle mouse click, see you got, okay, curve view. Um, you could probably copy and paste it from here. I don't know, let's try it. Let's try control C, and then go up here and hit control V. Yeah, that worked. So we've got our curve view attribute. And if I just wire that directly into overall emission color, and then crank up the emission weight, so I'm just going to go up here to the overall tab on our RS material and crank the emission weight up to, let's say two. Did that do anything? Let's just crank it up to 10 maybe. A lot of times when I'm plugging in nodes in here, I'll have a hard time seeing the updates until I actually do a refresh. So I'm just going to refresh the render, let's see if it takes hold. And there we go. We can see we got emission working quite brightly. I'm just going to maybe bring that back down to one. And it's kind of hard to see, but I think we do have some variation occurring on uh, these splines uh, along their length. But I, this is the thing is I don't want to have a mission occurring on all of the splines um, at once. I kind of want to use that random attribute that we can see right here to adjust the weight of this. So we're going to use another multiplication. We're going to multiply this curve view value by a uh, by that random attribute. So let's run on another particle attribute lookup. RS point. And here we'll do another vector multiplication. So let's run on a vector mul. And I'll just wire that in right here. And then we will wire the output of this particle attribute lookup into there. And then the attribute I wanted to use was this random attribute. So we're just going to type in rand here and it's not taking hold so i'm going to turn the render off and turn it back on again and it seems like it's it's done something but i think we need some ramps to kind of control that stuff so let's introduce some ramps into uh this shader to kind of control how much uh how much randomness how many outliers there are that are going to be illuminated and also what the color of this illumination is along the curve so let's do a uh, let's do a color for the particle attribute lookup. Let's throw down a uh, RS ramp here, and here maybe we will make our um, maybe we'll make our emission color go from uh, let's say orange to light orange as we get to the end of the curve. Whoops, selected the wrong one. So we'll say yeah, let's pick a nice dark orange, reddish orange color there, and then a lighter orange color towards the tip and let's fire off a render of that 
Okay, that's kind of starting to do it. I think that this yellow might be a little too yellow, so let's kind of bring the orange out a little bit more. Maybe I'll actually just bring this orange value in more towards red at the end, something like that. That's cool. And then also let's um, let's throw down a ramp on this uh, random attribute. So let's throw on another RS ramp and wire it in here. And I'm going to uh, stop and restart the render. And then I'm going to just take this black value and just crank it way up. So we're sort of limiting how many particles, uh, how many splines are allowed to um, emit by this by this amount. So really, you know, when we crank this up to a value of 0.9, that's really saying that only 10% of these splines are allowed to um, have their brightness cranked up. We really could set this slider up to be more like a, a percentage slider if we um, just kind of set it to a constant mode. So let's actually set that up. I'm going to reverse this. So I'm just going to bring the white value all the way down here and the black value um, can be wherever for right now. And I'm going to shift select both of these knots and choose constant mode. And that basically is going to say wherever this second one is, that's how much percentage is below is to the left. So that's the, our position along this curve is the percent of uh, splines that are allowed to illuminate. So if we want to illuminate only 10% um, of our splines, we just set this black uh, notch to uh, point, sorry, point one zero. And this, this is what it would look like to have only 10% of our um, splines illuminated. So that's pretty cool. And now they're just looking a little bit dim. So I'm just going to go back over to the RS material and go over to the overall tab and crank that emission weight back up to like something like 10. So those are getting nice and bright. Um, now I might head back over to the RS ramp and um, reduce the amount even more so that there's fewer splines that are actually allowed to be fully emissive just a handful. So bringing it way down to only 2% about right now. And you can really start to see the kind of effect that that's having on the uh, on this setup. Um, now I really want to make sure that my splines are starting dark on one end and getting bright towards this tip. So I'm going to um, also kind of go into this ramp and maybe uh, actually adjust the color of this. So when we get down towards the bottom, I'll just kind of crank this down to black so that they really are starting dim and then getting brighter as they get towards the tip. So I can really kind of uh, ramp that off by uh, doing things like that. I'm not seeing a lot of emissive strands up here, so I really kind of want to just like kind of scrub through my um, this this ramp that's kind of determining what random uh, values get um, illuminated. If I just slide through this, I can actually probably find a little section that will be illuminating some of these tips right here. I just need to kind of position my little white chunk in a different portion of my ramp. So I'm going to just grab both of these right now. And um, I'm, so I'm shift selecting uh, the first and second one. And I'm moving this along. You can see that a lot more are getting illuminated. But if I create a new um, notch by clicking over here and then just dragging it all the way to the left, you can see that we've just um, we're still back at having about two percent of our splines be illuminated. But now we can kind of scrub along until we find uh, some splines illuminating at the tip here that we like. And that's looking cool. Actually, if I um, bring my slider all the way to the right, I'm getting some of these uh, tips illuminated right here. Maybe I'll just bring this uh, white one back a little bit and see if we can get a couple more illuminated. And uh, maybe that's a little bit too much, so I might just kind of bring that back to where it was. Nice. So let's pull back and take a look at all of our splines now. Um, I'm going to untick the, let's untick the lock here and switch back to camera one. And then let's switch this back to camera one. I'm going to turn off the renderer and jump up to the object level. And let's turn on our hair splines and remove the render region and click the render button. Cool. And you can see some of those splines that actually, um, some of those splines actually kind of um, arced around some of these other um, these other vertexes of this um, icosahedron thingy and um, I kind of liked them so I left them but uh, you can get in there and delete those if they bother you or anything like that. 
And here, let's just turn the um, beam uh, mesh and uh, lightning mesh lights back on. I had disabled the uh, expression that tied the flag to the on off switch. So I just got to select both lights and go to the light tab and turn them on by clicking that checkbox. If you want to learn about the expression that ties the display flag to the on off switch, um, you can check out that bonus lesson in the lighting chapter. Um, I just kind of like the way this beam kind of went through that thing. And, uh, but yeah, whatever. It's cool. <laughs> this, the spiral is a shout out to the Houdini logo, by the way, if, if you, if that wasn't obvious, the Houdini logo being that little spiral thingy, I was, uh, feeling inspired. So I made sure those, um, those splines were, um, corkscrewing, uh, clockwise, just like the logo did. All right. And that is the basics of spline rendering in Houdini. So now let's look at, uh, volumes.